Nothing But The Words, episode number 45. How long should it take to write your book? Welcome to Nothing But The Words, the podcast that gives you everything you need to know to write a phenomenal book. Now here's your host, your author coach, Candace L. Davis. Hey there, and welcome to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis. As I record this episode, we are coming to the close of 2020. And from what I can tell, everyone else is just as happy as I am to see a close come to this year. Let's put a button on it. We're all ready to start fresh in 2021. And it's not because we're so foolish as to think that January 1st, 2021 is going to be a perfect pandemic-free day and we're going to be back to our normal lives or all the ills of the world will have been resolved. We're not stupid. We're just tired. We would like to leave the house and not have to worry about grabbing wipes and hand sanitizer and a number of masks in case we lose one or drop one or get one dirty. So we are just looking forward to, at least I know I am, a fresh start. And I look forward to that every year, no matter how great the year has been. There's just something really exciting and cool about the fresh start of a new year. As you can imagine, the end of one year and the beginning of a new year is a really busy time for me in my business. I help people write books. And as we get to the end of a year, People are looking back, wishing they had written the book. They promised themselves they would write. As we start a new year, people are deciding this is the year they're really going to write their books. And on a recent consultation call, the author really wanted me to give her a time frame for how long it would take her to write her book. That's a legitimate question. It's very reasonable. It's one of the questions I most commonly get. And if you look at it on its surface, It's pretty straightforward and really just a math problem, right? So let's say you want to write a manuscript of about 150 pages. That's about 45,000 words, by the way, which is neither a short book nor a long book. It is firmly in the middle and it's a good length for a book. Your book may not need to be that long. It may need to be a little longer, but that's right about the middle. Writing two pages a day is doable for most people. So let's assume you write two pages a day, five days a week, you give yourself the weekends off. That's about 40 pages a month. So it will take you about three and a half months to complete the first draft of your manuscript, about 45,000 words or 150 pages. But actual writing rarely happens that way. First of all, these numbers fail to take into account real life. (laughs) They fail to take into account the fact that you will need to revise your first draft What you will have finished at the end of those three and a half months is a first draft. Those rounds of revision that you do, and I'm not talking about just cleaning up typos or commas and and periods and punctuation. I'm talking about making sure the ideas are there that you want to have there, that the stories are well told, that you have illustrated any examples to the best of your ability, that things connect and flow and are easy to follow. In effect, I'm talking about making sure your book does its job and does it well, that requires revision. So you may want to revise your entire draft from beginning to end one or two times before it ever goes to your editor. Now, I personally revise many times more than that before it goes to the editor. However, that's my process. Everybody's process is different. Regardless of who you are, though, or how you write, you do need to factor in the time it will take you to revise your manuscript. So let's say that adds another month, maybe two, depending on you, to your three and a half months that it was taking you to write your 45,000 word manuscript. So at that point, you're really at four and a half, five and a half months. This formula also assumes you write every day without fail or you're able to make up for any time that you lose. So if you skip a day, you write for two hours the next day. Or if you skip a week, then you write for two hours for the next week. You may get sick during your writing time. You may have a family emergency that precludes you from writing. You may have a work overload of responsibility that takes up your writing time. These things have to be factored in when you think about how long it's going to take to write your book because they do happen. Now you can control some of those things, but sometimes things happen that are outside of our control and they do impact the time it takes to write your book. 
The formula also assumes that you never sit down at your keyboard without being able to produce the pages that you want it to produce. And that last point, sitting down and knowing what to write next is really important because there are times when authors sit down and don't know what to write next. And it can really start to drag on (laughs) because they sit down to write day after day and they don't know what to write next. And eventually they stop writing altogether. Let's take a personal or professional development book, for example. If you already have a well-defined process or method and you have used it to coach people or to consult with businesses or to create and teach courses or to give talks, much of the planning for your book is already done. If you're writing about your system, you'll be writing about your system. You're going to put that down as your outline and fill in the other content as needed. However, if you don't have your system on lock yet, you're going to have to work that out. That's going to be a part of the writing process. And I highly recommend that you do it before you get into writing your book. Most cases, it's not going to happen in an hour. Maybe you've been teaching these things a little bit here and there, but you've never put it all together in a system. You need to get that locked down before you try to write the book and expect that you will be tweaking it as you write. If you are concerned that you haven't had a chance to test it, then you may want to test it. (laughs) And now often authors are doing this based on something they've used in their own business or their own personal life. And that's perfectly fine. You may also though want to test it with some other people to make sure that they can duplicate it. If you're not 100% clear on your opinions or your philosophy when you're writing your book, you will need to think those things through too. And you may think, girl, I already know what I'm talking about. I know what I think about these things. And you might. It might seem like you already know exactly what you want to say about your topic, whether it's marriage or parenting or self-worth or diversity and inclusion, whatever you're writing about. But as you're writing, you may find topics that you're not 100% clear on. So these subtopics of your topic may pop up and you may not know exactly how to articulate what you want to say about those things. For example, one of my coaching clients changed his view on forgiveness, which was a central theme of his book while he was in the process of writing that memoir. As he wrote about his life and as we met to discuss his work, the insights he was drawing from those experiences and his thoughts on forgiveness evolved. So it took him a little longer to write that section of the book, but it was much more solid and much more helpful to his readers once he had written it. If you're writing a subject matter expert book with or without elements of how to research can add to your writing time. Sometimes you will have to do research. For instance, I co-wrote a book with a client who relied heavily on interviews for her book content. So she interviewed 10 or 15 different people. And not only did we have to set aside the time for her to do that part of the research, I had to do additional research. So before we even started writing, she invested more than 20 hours into those interviews. And during the writing process, I invested at least another 20 hours in researching the events that she was interviewing people about. That means we did not finish the book in three and a half months. In fact, it took about six months to compose the first draft of the manuscript from beginning to end. The book would not have been nearly as good without that extra work. She got invited to the White House to speak about that book. She has been all over the world speaking about it. So it was worth the effort. As the subject matter expert, you are not expected to know everything about your subject. You cannot always rely on your own body of knowledge. You may need to take the time to find statistics that support your arguments or to find case studies that expand beyond your personal circle or to find additional stories to illustrate the points that you're making. Those things are perfectly good. (laughs) They serve your book well. They give the reader something else to hold on to as proof of your concepts, but it does take time to pull that information together. A friend and colleague of mine is writing a narrative nonfiction book based on events that took place early in the 20th century. She was not alive (laughs) early in the 20th century. She is not 100 plus years old. So she is driving even now during the pandemic to historical societies to do as much research as she can. She has to make appointments to get in there, but she's doing it. And she's reaching out to descendants of the people who experienced those events so her book is going to have, if not firsthand knowledge, it will have it will have information from the people who documented it at that time and information that was passed down in families. Her book would be, frankly, 
impossible to write without that research. What she would produce would not be of any substance or consequence. But with that research, she's writing something great. (laughs) It's going to be incredible. I can't tell you the topic because she's not sharing it publicly yet, but I'm super excited for her to get that book out to the world. Even if you're writing a memoir or a novel, you may still need to do some research to get an understanding of different things that are impactful in your book. So for example, if your hometown that you grew up in was essential to your development, then you may need to do some research on your hometown. One of my coaching clients is writing about her experience growing up in a small town in North Carolina. And even though she grew up there, she had to do some research to give the readers a full picture of what that town was like. So you may need to do that. You may need to research the setting or an organization or institution that plays a role or even another person that plays a role in your novel or memoir. The time it will take you to write a book depends on so much more than how many pages or words you plan to write. As always, if you've listened to this podcast at all, you know that I recommend you outline thoroughly before you begin writing. Not only will that help you write every day because you'll be able to look at that outline almost as a menu and pick what you want to write today, but it will also help you see any holes in your book. And even if you can't see them, if you share them with a coach or with a smart friend who asks smart questions, they may be able to look at your outline and tell you where they see holes. You'll see where you need to do some more research or where you need to dig deeper into your own philosophy by doing more study or where you need to shape your system more effectively. So don't be afraid to share that outline and get feedback from somebody who can really help you. Now, I've done other podcast episodes about how you can write your book faster, and we include things like taking care of your energy and creating a writing routine and creating that outline. But it's natural, I know, to want to get that book done quickly. It's natural to want it published and out there serving people and serving you. If you're writing a book, you expect to provide real value. If you're writing a book, you want to stand as your authority piece or position you as an expert, it is worth investing the time in this process. If you sit down to write and you're not progressing as quickly as you'd like to, ask yourself why. Do you need to solidify your systems and processes before you share them in a book? Do you need to do some research up front so it's there when you're ready to write each section? Do you need to get clear on where you stand on important elements or issues in your book? especially when it comes to taking a stand for what you believe to be right or true. I think it's well worth it to give yourself a full six months to write your book. Can you write it faster? You can. And there are some cases where you will. If you've already developed these systems and you're just capturing them on a page, go for it. You probably can write it much more quickly. But if you are writing a book and you have not done all of that work up front, give yourself the six months to get it done. If you get it done faster, how much cooler is that? And I'm talking about, this isn't necessarily all writing time. Some of this may be research and development time, researching your ideas and developing them. At the end of the day, if you want to write a phenomenal book, you can't let these speed bumps stop you. You can't let them frustrate you. They're just part of the writing process. And if you take the time and deal with them early on, writing your book will come much more easily and will happen much more quickly for you. Trust me when I tell you the great books that you've read, the ones that have been most impactful to you in your life, someone spent the time to make them that way. That's all for this episode. If you found some value in this podcast, I would really appreciate a great review from you wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author, Coach Candace L. Davis, and I'll see you next time. 